Hi, good day ladies and gentlemen. This is Quinn from Micrographics Devon. I'm the application engineer there. Bring you another bit of quick tip that's gonna hopefully help you a bit. So that being said, what this is today is that when you first start, especially with your PNID area in Plan 3D, as soon as you jump to it, you'll probably be presented with something similar to this, that you start off with the layout. And it's all okay, but the problem is that if you're going to be working completely just in your layout, it can get very taxing on your eyes, especially if you're doing this all day, every day, long hours. And your first instinct, if you've used AutoCAD for a while, is, okay, well, you know what, we've got layouts, we must have, you know, our model space, because if you look, we've got our viewport, which we're interacting with our model. So there are um, the people that would then instantly want to say, okay, cool, let's just jump to our model space. And if you look down here, normally in plant, you will not have this. Having your option to jump to your model and your layout or paper space directly using these. These would actually normally be missing. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. There is another option, by the way, um, if you don't want to put these back, you want to keep kind of a normal plant feel, is that you can hover over the tab of the drawing and then you can jump between your model, hover back over the tab again, and then you can jump back to your layout again. So this is a quick easy way how you can jump between them, but for just in case you do want to put your model and layout tabs back, what you can do is go into your application menu, options here at the bottom and then in here you'll normally start off in the options menu in the files tab you want to jump to the display tab now you come all the way down here to the bottom in layout elements now normally by default your display layout and model tabs will be unticked meaning that if i click apply now that it's unticked you'll notice that here in the bottom my model and my layout disappeared. So this would be how what you would normally see in a default run-of-the-mill straight off installation of AutoCAD Plan 3D when you jump into the PNID. So yeah, th this could be handy to switch on and it does kind of help you a little bit. Okay, so when you go apply and okay, you can see it's back on there again. Now, one thing you just have to be very careful of when you're working rather in your model space than in your plant, uh, sorry, paper space, is that you have to be aware of your limits. But now, if you look carefully inside this very white page, you can see that I've got this very faintish yellow line that's running all the way around it. That is kind of my limits that's been shown so that I know that if I am working in my model size, little sort of side of things, so if I jump back to my model, if I'm working here, you notice I cannot see the edges of my viewport. Obviously, if you've been working with AutoCAD for a while, that's probably you stood out like a sore thumb. Now, the way that we can fix this is to either A, try and get the correct size because remember we generally are drawing like one is to one in our model space and our paper because it's a pnid it doesn't technically have any scales to work with so we generally draw one is to one so you could for an instance go into your layout measure the size of your drawing window sorry your viewport in this case go back to your model and then you could just adjust it or scale it depending on the size over here. So in other words, if this size was 200, you jump back to your model and you can make that size 200. Well, scale it up to 200 and therefore you could then stretch everything in one go or scale everything in one go. But there's a little bit of an easier method to do. Um, it's not as accurate, not as pretty, but it's functional, especially if you're a little bit stroke for time. If you double click into your drawing window, sorry, viewport, I just keep killing that drawing window for today for some reason, then you'll notice your viewport's locked. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly scroll into the bottom here so I can see where my origin is. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna unlock my viewport. Now I'm being very careful not to scroll. 
and I'm going to drag this view so that that limit is only slightly in view. There we go, the bottom there. I'm just going to quickly relock it so that when I zoom out and go to the top here, I don't accidentally edit it. I'm going to unlock it. I'm going to select my viewport. Whoops. Okay, don't do that. What I'm going to have to do now is zoom extends. So if you do do a mistake like what I've just done, what you can do is do zoom extends, which has now played a problem with our scale. I'm going to unlock our scale. One is to one. I'm just going to drag this back into location. Click my top one, and just to make my life easier, I'm just going to select my center groups, my stretch ones, and then stretch it into location. So as you can see, in a nutshell, all I've done is I've just, through my viewport, stretched those limits. So I hope that has helped you guys a bit. The only other thing I could mention here is in the model space, what you could also do because you're working from your origin point, is actually type the limit command, limits, and then you can actually select and draw a limit system. So this way, if you try and put something in somewhere where it's not supposed to be, it should complain properly. Cool guys, thank you very much. I hope that's been helpful. Have a good one. Cheers, bye.